This is The Bottom Line. The Bottom Line on 938 Live. Now, global leaders are looking for progress in regional-wide free trade at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC Summit in Beijing, China. U.S. President Barack Obama said that he sees momentum building for the 12-country Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP. The leaders of the countries involved in TPP said they have instructed their ministers to make concluding this agreement a top priority. At the same time, China, which is not involved in the TPT, is promoting their own regional trade initiative called the Free Trade Area of the Asia-Pacific. For more on this, we're joined now by Professor Nick Beasley of La Trobe University in Australia. Now, Professor Beasley, leaders pushed for the progress on the Trans-Pacific Partnership on the sidelines of the APEC Summit. To what extent is this a step forward, despite a deadlock due to a disagreement between the US and Japan when it comes to these negotiations? Yeah, I think... The effort at APEC is to try to put a bit of public pressure uh, on the negotiations. There's there's been a bit of a sticking point, particularly between Japan and the US on agriculture, uh, which has put a bit of a roadblock in the ambitions to get the agreement signed by the end of the year. So I think what you get in APEC is the leaders together, so a lot of political capital and a lot of media exposure to try to break that deadlock. Uh, I don't think, though, that this is going to be enough to get this thing signed quickly. Um, Optimists, uh, particularly those who who really have a lot to gain from agricultural liberalisation, like Australia, like New Zealand um, and some of the Latin American countries that are involved, think a deal can be done, um, but it's probably more like six or eight months away rather than in the next four to six weeks. Mm. Now, Beijing wants the 21 APEC members to endorse a stronger commitment to the free trade area of the Asia-Pacific, or FTAP. What would you say is the progress of this initiative? This is a really interesting move, actually, because um, FTAP, as a rather unlovely name, uh, was was a few years ago America's preferred model for uh, trade liberalisation in the region. Uh, America came late to the TPP, which was largely a small country initiative. Singapore, uh, Chile, Brunei and others were the, the initiators of it. Uh, the US decided to join in um, and liked, liked the idea that China wasn't involved and that it became part of the, the, the broader pivot to Asia under President Obama. Uh, so they moved away from FTAP, and now China has all of a sudden come out and said, actually, FTAP, that's, that's what we think is a good idea. Mm. Uh, and so I think the, this is very much, um, I think, trying to call America's bluff on its trade liberalization policy because uh, China had been supportive of the ASEAN um, prompted RCEP, the Regional Cooperation and Economic partnership agreement which was an attempt to sort of bring together all of ASEAN's free trade agreements with its various partners to a broader agreement and China had liked that one because America wasn't part of this. FTAP presents what from Beijing's point of view might be a kind of compromise because the US is part of FTAP but also Russia and China is Mm. Uh, and for America to say no to FTAP it would really be having to say you know no to China so I think politically it's a really smart move. The US and China are on opposing sides of two different trade packs yet they reached an understanding to reduce tariffs on information technology. How significant is that? Well, look, this is a good sign. I mean, you can overstate how important it is, and you know, the bigger picture of trade liberalisation is not a big value gain. Um, but any time the US and China agree on something, I think everyone can, can take some comfort from that. Uh, I think it's notable that on questions of trade, we've seen such politicisation of the Chinese and American positions and each trying to help manoeuvre the other. Where they can strike an agreement, that's that's a positive, because it says not only can they you know, do business with mm. one another, but they're able to to uh, reach a middle ground. And thank you very much, Professor Nick Beasley. Nick Beasley of La Trobe University in Australia. The bottom line brought to you by Turkish Airlines, Europe's best airline.